Okay, so the first step we take uh, in uh, the process of uh, network enumeration is identifying like hosts. So which are hosts are, which that are alive, right? This, these are some hosts that uh, uh, show us uh, a response to our activity, right? Or they show their attempts to hide this response, right? So this is important to understand in order to uh, not uh, uh, miss a large part of uh, the networks that are operated by relatively technically savvy network personnel. You know, so there are people who uh, obscure uh, some hosts. Uh, by different means, uh, everything you need to know right now is that uh, not only the things are readily available and uh, obvious to you are there, there might be some hosts that are actively hiding their location or their presence in the network, okay? So uh, how can we do that? First of all, uh, there is this uh, uh, notion of uh, Mm, common system administrating tools okay so there, there are hacking tools that we use right uh, that are specifically designed in order to perform uh, this uh, offensive type of security activities right but uh, there are also uh, very common and uh, popular system administrating tools that can be used by us as well why not so first of all what is the simplest way to verify whether uh, a specific host designated by a specific uh, IP address is present in the network, right? So we can use ICMP protocol, right? In order to just uh, send uh, an echo request to it and uh, receive an echo reply. So these two are different types of uh, ICMP packets that are uh, used in this protocol, right? So this is one example of using absolutely mm, quote-unquote legitimate tools right also there is this telnet program that normally is used to connect to telnet services run on port tcp24 uh, however it can be used in order to establish any tcp connection really you know so uh, we can see that it can connect to any tcp open port or listening port on a host and uh, um, it, it may be not capable of doing all the application protocol stuff, right? So it will expect you to enter some uh, protocol verbs yourself. However, in the terms of TCP handshake, so establishing a full connection to a service, it will serve you well. Uh, how can you use it um, in two ways? First of all, you can just tell that to a specific host, right? Uh, to a specific port and uh, and wait for a while. If uh, nothing happens, if it will just freeze in the console like that, it will most probably mean that, uh, after a few seconds of course, it will most probably mean that uh, it has successfully connected to the TCP socket. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, that's it. So after some time out, most probably it will just uh, break down, but uh, in the meanwhile, you can use this uh, other tool, Netstat, in order to see uh, what's the status of this connection. So you will see that uh, the connection is established, and if it's in established state for some time, that means that on the other side, the server has effectively uh, responded to telnet attempts to establish TCP connection. So this is kind of useful in the situation you don't have any other parts of your toolkit with you, you know, so you are a completely hostile uh, PC that belongs to some system administrator and you don't have even a map there. Uh, what is Traceroad? Traceroad is, uh, is a tool that uh, lets you map network topology as a whole. So uh, you are not uh, expected to map a specific network you already are connected to by it okay so it's uh, it's rather a tool of establishing some knowledge about how different networks are interconnected right so for example you are in a network uh, in, a, in a class c network of your own it's your home router or something 
and you want to understand how many different routers connect you to a specific network in the internet okay so you use that tool in order to do that you know the address uh, that is out there and you trace route there and you see that uh, different hops uh, represent different uh, gateways that you pass through uh, on your uh, route to this specific IP address. So how is it done? Uh, the techniques uh, are quite tricky so it employs uh, both ICMP and uh, TCP UDP uh, levels right of TCP IP stack so uh, what you should know in order to understand how it uh, operates is uh, that every time you're trying to establish a specific TCP connection for example right uh, the router that uh, uh, is supposed to be the last yeah in, in this chain of uh, IP gateways that connect you to your target uh, it uh, in, in case the uh, port is closed on the target machine it will be the, the, the gateway I mean it will be the source of a response issue to you that you know there is, there is no open port that you have uh, specified in your connection parameters so uh, Trace root gets uh, it, it takes advantage of this functionality of this uh, particular uh, situation <laughs> in the protocol interoperation, right? So it is trying it is trying to uh, understand what's going on in the network by uh, subsequently issuing the requests of different uh, TTLs of different time to live parameters, starting from one, for example, yeah, uh, and. Uh, if you run it you will see interactively that uh, the first hop that uh, appears the first gateway is your own so TTL1 resulted in that um, you know the first gateway just got your packet and this in decreased its TTL value and see that it's already zero and it's just calling you back saying you know I'm not sending that anywhere so so here you are with your uh, like receipt of not transmitting your packet anywhere else yeah so repeating this in order by increasing every time this TTL uh, parameter on your side by one you will receive uh, a pretty uh, correct representation of what uh, is the portion of the network that connects you and your target uh, yeah so this uh, is somehow related to penetration testing activities unfortunately EC Council thinks that you have to understand how it's how it works and uh, yeah if you want to need if you want more detail in this operation, uh, please uh, take, for example, Wireshark and see what uh, activity trace would generate when you run it. Uh, the other part uh, of uh, common uh, system administrating tools that uh, can uh, give you an advantage on a penetration test are these uh, Windows related utilities. For example, NBT scan just gives you an idea of what's going on in the Windows world in your network. Of course, everything will be uh, to the most extent limited to your own uh, physically connected segment like Class C network or VLAN that you are uh, connected to physically. Uh, but still, it's a lot of information of what's going on, who is uh, performing what role and uh, what are the shares and maybe even what are the user sessions uh, if Windows is uh, configured not very securely, right? And the second one is sharing arm. It's of course a part of uh, Mark Rusinovich's uh, system journal suite, right? So you can download it from Microsoft and it's really cool. So it just gives you uh, a really a uh, thorough representation of what uh, file shares are published on the network and what information then can they contain and uh, which of them you can access with your current permissions and uh, yeah it's a very cool auditors tool that uh, allows you to see um, who is sharing what and uh, if some of this stuff is classified and it's uh, anyway shared even internally that will give you a reason to start a, an internal investigation, for example.